Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this updated video on the tropics. And so in this video, we will be talking about these two disturbances as well as Depression Lisa, which is expected to become a remnant low very soon. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update. And to show your support for the channel, you can leave a like on this video. Alright, and so let us go ahead and kickstart things with uh, Tropical Depression Lisa. And so here's the latest uh, cone forecast from the National Hurricane Center. And we can see here that uh, we're not seeing much more that is expected from the cyclone. And it is likely to become a remnant low this morning. And so uh, it currently has maximum sustained winds of 30 miles per hour. And it is accelerating to the north-northwest at 3 miles per hour. So not much more is going to become of the cyclone. It isn't likely to re-intensify in the uh, Bay of Campeche. And uh, it is expected to be off the radar very soon. And so now let's go ahead and move to these disturbances. And that first one out there uh, is given a 30% chance to possibly develop. And so it is going to be quite distant from the low pressure area that has formed in the Caribbean in association with that other disturbance. So that won't be too much of a problem for it and because of all that distance it is potentially going to be getting itself together and might become a tropical cyclone however it has limited time as upper level winds are expected to become less favorable and then as for the Caribbean disturbance here, we're seeing that there is a 60% chance of possible development and imminent development isn't anticipated. However, once the system makes its way north of uh, the islands of the northeastern Caribbean, uh, it might be in a more conducive environment and we might start to see it getting itself together and acquiring subtropical or tropical characteristics. And uh, it is going to be likely making its way a bit to the northwest and bringing impacts to areas such as uh, the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, and even the U.S. However, there is quite a bit of activity taking place right now in the Caribbean. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And here we have the satellite imagery. So the low pressure area is located south of the Dominican Republic. And we see a lot of moisture in the region along with that. And so that is likely inducing a lot of showers and thunderstorms across some areas. So if you're in the Lesser Antilles, uh, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, the Virgin Islands, you can let me know what what is going on there since yesterday and if you guys have been experiencing a lot of rainfall because uh, all of this moisture here is just going to be continually inducing those inclement weather conditions until the system makes its way north of the region however uh, it's a it is expected to be a broad low pressure area so it will be very extensive and could still induce some rainfall activity across portions of the northern caribbean so let's see what's going to be happening for the next couple of days but it is likely that there will be impacts across the bahamas turks and caicos islands and possibly even uh the u.s and specifically florida and so uh impacts that are likely include that very heavy rainfall gusty winds at times and so the heavy rainfall could possibly result in flooding across flood prone areas so guys please be aware of that happening and uh let's go ahead and see what two of the models the gfs and euro are expecting in terms of the system affecting the u.s and when it could affect the area and so we're looking at the euro model here and this is a map showing the moisture indicated by the colors those greens yellows reds and then we have those black squiggly lines called isobars and isobars uh join areas of equal pressure and when they're in a circular manner with a pressure of at least 10 13 millibars uh, you could possibly be looking at a tropical cyclone so that's what we're looking for here and uh on the euro model we're seeing that we have all this moisture and we have that low pressure area making its way north of hispaniola going into the vicinity of the bahamas and that is around tuesday going to wednesday and uh, eventually the model shows that the system is going to be crossing over florida headed to thursday and friday and eventually uh gets pulled in by a front that's going to be making its way out of the u.s so this is quite interesting here while the model is expecting and uh 
those impacts are getting more and more likely, as I said. Uh, the heavy rainfall, gusty winds. So, uh, guys, if you're in Florida, please be aware of this happening. Thankfully, this isn't expected to be a strong tropical cyclone or subtropical cyclone, but it could be strong enough to induce uh, some very significant impacts, though. So, please take all the necessary precautions and stay safe. And then let's go ahead and take a look at what the GFS is forecasting. And so, uh, here here we have the model expecting that we're going to be having that low pressure area developing uh, just in the vicinity of the Bahamas, similar to what the euro is expecting, and just as how the euro is expecting it to get pulled in by a front. That is the same thing here with the GFS. So uh, we're seeing some sort of consistency with this expectation, and again, this is going to be a broad low pressure area. So all that shower and thunderstorm activity is likely to be quite widespread, and so only time will tell if this is going to really develop and intensify into a tropical cyclone and the next name on the list is Nicole so uh, either that disturbance that is out there given a 30% chance to develop or this one might become Nicole but that one out there as I said earlier it has limited time because uh, conditions are going to become unfavorable and to be specific the upper level winds but as we're going to be heading through November not a whole lot of development is expected but that doesn't mean that there won't be any because looking at this uh, chart right here we're seeing that throughout the period from november 1st to december 1st we're seeing that though the activity is minimal there is still some activity that takes place within this time so uh, we definitely still have to keep our eyes on the tropics but the hurricane season is going to officially end uh in just a few weeks but that doesn't mean that there won't be any more activities it just means that it's very unlikely that we'll see anything in the off season period but it isn't impossible because uh there have been tropical cyclones in the off season periods but again in terms of that disturbance there is that 60 percent chance that we could possibly see some development of it during the next five days uh and the chance has been on the rise so let's see if it uh, if it will continue but based on how things look right now i think we can certainly see uh, a system a tropical or subtropical cyclone develop from it and then uh, in terms of the rest of the caribbean uh, aside from all that moisture and association with the disturbance we see quite a bit of activity across sections of the southern caribbean portions of colombia and venezuela and uh, also parts of central america over in the bay of campeche there we have a uh, dissipating tropical depression lisa which as I said earlier, it is expected to be off the radar very soon. And so guys, uh, the Greater Antilles, to be specific, Cuba, Jamaica, and even parts of Haiti, and also the Cayman Islands are not experiencing too much right now. Pretty nice weather, and uh, things are not expected to get too hostile in these regions. And so that is really it for this update video, guys. So if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments, and you can also share your thoughts there. And of course, remember to always be weatherwise.